guys, Cliff here. This is part four of the Atom Special Auto Gyro build. And this part's gonna be the rotor blades. <laughs> I've got a piece of reasonably hard balsa here um, and I'm going to, I'll bend it down. I'm going to, I've already stuck on the um, leading edge. It's six mil, 6.5 mil balsa. That's um, quarter inch to you and I. And what you do, you stick one on each end of a four inch piece of wood. Actually, it looks bigger than four inch. That's four inch. Weigh it down, keep it nice and flat. Stick it on and tape it into position with masking tape. That keeps it nice and tight onto the wood without damaging the wood or anything like that. So I only need three rotor blades for uh, the Atom, but it's a good idea to make a spare. So that's what I'm going to do. Strange section though, auto gyros have a flat, completely flat, as a Clark Y would be rounded. This one is sharp at the point something to bear in mind. So first thing is to measure exactly halfway all the way down and do a nice straight cut. Nearly there. This should do it. Yep. Okay. So I've got the four blade blanks cut and sanded to length. And I've put on profile shape on each tip and I'm just going to plane and sand to shape. I've made four. I only need three. You saw the sheet. Um, I've profiled them up. They've come out quite nicely. They're all balancing at roughly 28 grams now so I can press on and before I find the centre of gravity Lengthwise, I need to glue on the um, fiberglass reinforcement shims. Put two little bits of wood, but now we can see it's grossly tail heavy. So I'm going to move the pins back a little bit. Okay, look, the center line is now marked one millimeter back and I can glue on the top uh, reinforcements and they are kind of see-through just going to rough them up again and that will be glued center line on the center line the rearward center line centered on there and then I measure 430 in from there and drill a hole apparently. Okie doke, so that's all three can now dry. Um, when they're dry I measure 430 millimeters in from the each end of a blade and drill an M3 hole down through intersecting the rear line which is one mil back from the center of gravity. Okay just balancing the blade now span wise Right, let's just see where these all come. Hope you can see that just there, the lines. That's good. Okay, so that is in fact number three and number one are identical. So it's the instructions say to balance each blade on a single piece of dowel, blah, blah, blah. Mark the position. Presume the blades all weigh different amounts. We can now add mass to the lighter blades to match them with the heaviest. What I'm doing, I'm adding a weight to this one. To I need to bring the center of gravity this way. So I'm adding weight from the center line or the gravity line as marked onto this side of the blade to make it to bring the center of gravity closer to the root to match the other two. 
Uh, I've given it a couple of coats of dope, but not on the full width because it'll make it tail heavy. I've got only each side of the balance point that way. So I'm adding it just equal amounts that side of the line and same on the back, equal amounts that side of the line, but no further than the balance point. Okay, so all three blades now weigh the same. I'll give this a very light sanding just to get off any uh, specks of dust, etc. Um, the next thing now is to bolt two blades together and see how they um, actually seesaw together. You certainly need a bit of patience, guys, for this uh, blade balancing lark, but um, <laughs> it's a lark. Uh, it's getting there. I've got some, um, this one's pretty much e in equilibrium now. So I've balanced, what have we got so far? I've balanced three and two together. This is one and two. Balance. Which wind's blowing it? One and two. So now I want to try three and one. So I'm going to take these apart, I'm going to lightly sand them and then I can think about covering and then you have to rebalance it yet again because of course covering can change things as well. So I'll see you back for the covering. Briefly, like that. And one there, one opposite. Okay, time to get the time to get the uh, turn off a minute. Time to get the hot air blower out. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit on each side. Okay, let that cool off. And see what we've got. Go for a small pin with a very fine point. I want to put whacking great holes in it. <laughs> so I'll put one there. What you usually find is that the side you don't see comes out better than the side you do see. And there we have it. So that's one blade uh, covered. Nice. One rotor blade. Okay guys, there we go. One set of blades ready for the use of uh, oh, there's a little wrinkle there, look. Um, went quite well. I've put on a little bit of uh, wingtip colour, silver to match the body, a bit of splash of red because a couple of little red items on the fuselage. So next job is to uh, check that they balance okay and and then I'm just going to set up the rotor head a little bit better and then I can mount the blades. Getting closer and closer to that maiden flight. Just thinking the might be a little bit of daylight showing through there. It's not quite 90, it's tightened up slightly, so I'm gonna see if I can adjust it very slightly. 
Alrighty, I've just been playing on the transmitter and we've got actually we have got that's on I've got to reverse aileron and uh, the battery compartment was getting a little bit clouded crowded clouded clouded I like that very aeronautical so what I've done I've cleared everything out of the battery compartment um, so I pop the receiver on the back here I put the satellite up on the mast I've put the ESC below in this rather natty looking tube uh, the cables outside instead of inside so that goes through straight into the motor and I used a bit of cable tied air look to hold it down tight so that sits in there lots of lovely cooling it's a cardboard tube I've done the hang test it hangs at about 15 degrees which is anywhere from 14 to 18 I think Richard said in the instructions so so um, I think it's about 15 so that's okay that comes down to nine millimeters it's a little fly which is the thickness of the um, rotor head the C30 rotor head from cool wind let's just see if we can find a spanner there we go okay one rotor blade here we go that goes on there then we put a anti-shape nut on the bottom screw that baby up what do I need I need Allen key now this blade has to be tight enough not to flop about but loose enough to move I think that's too tight that slipped on there then Um, I think it's got to basically hold its own weight when turned sideways so that will do for the minute let's pop another one on look at that guys this is also gyro let's get that out of the way again to spin it for the first time she lives fantastic on there that will tuck down inside there eventually I won't do it now Somehow, don't think I'll be needing a full throttle. I've got uh, there's a little bit of left on the rotor head, and it's set to 90 degrees to start to the boom. So that's the place to start. I think, guys, she's, she's finished. She's absolutely finished. No, anyway, there we are. Uh, the atom is is finished. It's done. I'll get some photographs. Hopefully the sun will come out in a little, little bit and I can superimpose them over what I'm saying now. Here it is done. It's ready for its initial flop hops, hop flops. And well, I'm really looking forward to it. So it's an Atom Special by Richard Harris. 
Uh, if you want to give us a thumbs up button, that'd be good. Boop the button. If you want to subscribe, even better because you've got more chance of seeing the maiden. You can hit the bell button as well if you want. I think that ESC thing on the bottom looks cover looks pretty good actually. Quite pleased with that.